like is my next piece that I'm working on right now. And I think it's going to be super, super important with the work that I want to be doing is, is having the mindset to receive and having the mindset to collaborate with life. And I think that comes with trusting myself and trusting life, but I'm not going to be able to see it if, you know, I'm not giving grace and kindness to myself you know as I mentioned um for those that resonate with being hyper achievers or or judgmental or welcome to whole and unleashed a podcast about coming home to ourselves I'm your host Jessica Locke a holistic mindset strala yoga and human design guide this podcast is not about telling you what to do It's about sharing stories and tools to connect to your inner wisdom and maybe give you an extra nudge towards living wholeheartedly. Because deep down, only you know what's best for you. We'll be talking mindset, business, recovering from burnout, human design, transitions, and so much more. Let's dive in, shall we? Hello, Annalise. (laughs) Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here today. And I'm so excited to go through your chart, dive deeper. And I know you're navigating through some, I wouldn't say transitions. You're just in a period of like, oh my gosh, like how do I look under the layers of who I am? How do I navigate, bring my purpose? What do I want to do in the world? And, you know, big questions, (laughs) no pressure. 100%. Well, I really was in transition. I have to say this last year, I feel like I'm kind of on a little bit of the outside of it but there was just a huge you know my my girl self I shed my girl self I feel more like a woman now more than ever mm-hmm. and I felt like I went through that I'm kind of coming out like a little butterfly right now yeah, and yeah. this is the perfect time to to talk to you about about my design and get all of your knowledge because I you know I've like I said been reading your blog and listening to your pod and it's been such a great resource for me so I feel so grateful and excited so <laughs> yes thank you for being here because I think it's so helpful when we learn about others people's design and almost have a point of reference like oh I have these similar elements maybe this is how I'm feeling so thank you for also sharing the space and you know opening up for yeah. others to potentially tune into as well <laughs> I mean that's just it I think there's like pieces in our stories that you know maybe it's a tidbit that someone just resonates with and maybe it unlocks something in them that takes them to their next space that they need to explore and I think that's that's exactly where I've been at is just absorbing other people's stories and information and learning more about myself too so that's what's so special about podcasts you know (laughs) Yeah. And you mentioned that like this year was almost like a a big shedding part because you found about your birth chart information. Like how did you stumble upon or how did they find you? I was, I graduated university and this was the moment that my, my, my map for my life ended, Mm -hmm. you know, when you go to university and do school, you're like for the next five years, it's pretty structured. You know what classes you got Monday through Friday, your life kind of knows what's happening and all of a sudden that was done and I'm like oh my gosh what am I gonna do um who am I Uh, where do I want to go from here and I did another little course as I was finishing school um with Natalia Benson I don't know if you've ever heard of her or her pod but she's also fabulous um she's like an astrologer in business um that's kind of where I wanted to go next was maybe I want to be entrepreneurial and so it was her course that kind of allowed me to, I, I believe it's, it's CBBS. If any other people out there are interested in, in kind of being entrepreneurial and learning more about themselves, it kind of is like a holistic um, combination of the two. And so that's where I got into the birth chart stuff. And then human design was shortly after, shortly mm-hmm. after. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So a little bit more of context for the people listening, your chart you're a three five generator, emotional authority, and triple split. <laughs> How did it feel to learn about these elements or to have a language for perhaps the things you've always felt but didn't have, you know, a way to frame it? 
it felt good. It felt a little bit, um, I don't want to say like surprising or nerve wracking, but you know, a lot of the information around three, five profile, <laughs> martyr heretic, oh, yeah. not the most like appealing profile because but you know what? It's exactly how I feel, especially right now. I feel like, I feel like a bit of a, is, is it the three that's the martyr or the heretic? It's, uh, it's the three that's the martyr. That's the martyr. Yes. So that's yeah. how I feel. It feels like I, and you know what? That's exactly where I am. I'm in my twenties. I'm kind of going in, in a little bit of different directions right now and throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks. And it feels overwhelming. It feels mm-hmm. Like I get exhausted with myself because mm. I'm like, why can't I just pick something and work at it? Right. You know? Does it feel like you're being pulled in like every direction and possibility? Yes. <laughs> yes. Like yeah. it literally, I'm interested in so many things. I, I think the other beautiful part about it is I'm actually good at a lot of things too. So I can pick things up relatively quickly. I think that's a bit of that energy, which is really cool. But um when you're just trying to put your feet on the ground, you know, and and feel grounded and, and work at something, the energy can feel a bit scattered at times. And I think that's where that like overwhelming piece comes in. Mm -hmm. Um, What other pieces, the generator made sense for me and the emotional authority as Mm -hmm. well. I feel like I totally ride this emotional wave when I'm coming you know, to a, a decision that feels right for me. And there was a piece that I had read about that for emotional authority people, you might not necessarily feel a hundred percent about the decision because since you can, you know, sense different possibilities, or at least just go through the different possibilities through your system and feel it out, you're still going to feel that like 5% or 1% where it's mm-hmm. like, maybe not. Right. Yeah, yeah. And you also have the gate of crisis. So sometimes I like bring that up with my clients not to scare them. And the name sounds like, oh my gosh, but it's almost like you have the ability to almost like feel the worst of something like go through the crisis, feel that energy, or like you're also able to handle whatever crisis comes your way. You know, you might panic, but you're like, I've got this. So whenever you do go through your wave, you're also going to get a flavor of the crisis of like, oh my gosh, is it the end of the world? Like, what if I make this decision and it's wrong? What if I do this? What if my clothes don't match? (laughs) You know, like from very important, like big purpose questions to like little things like, oh my gosh, does my hair look good today? Do I feel okay? Do I feel like myself today? Yes, literally. I actually, I was looking through my notes last night Mm because I I went through all the gates too. And that one's in my North node and the North node is like where we're supposed to move towards in this lifetime. And it's interesting. What I wrote down for the gate of crisis was, um, I think it was using challenge as like a jumping off point. Mm -hmm. Like, and I'm wondering if the pieces, let's see. Yeah. Um, use conflict as a gateway to peace. So yeah, kind of parallels like using using challenge or tribulation to catapult you into something. Like it, it, something's trying to tell me something, I guess, is, yeah. is what I'm getting from that. Yeah, and the thing about the emotional wave, I'm like, I guess we're going to the emotional wave right now, is that like when you're feeling it, you might not have like the, you can't, you can have like a level of awareness of what's happening, but you can't influence the wave. You can't kind of like, oh, this is the lesson right now kind of like no because all your energy is going through like processing making sense of it feeling the high feeling the low and supporting yourself and then only in hindsight as usually things are that's when you're like oh it's clicking and because things are not linear there might be things that happens down the road like a few weeks months of now you're like oh that thing that happened a while back I get it now or like you know it gives you an extra layer of insight so this emotional authority and then also being a triple split means that you need a lot of time in your process. Doesn't mean you're slow. Doesn't mean it might feel like you are because of how conditioned we are in the world and how I think social media plays such a big part sometimes when we're first starting a business. It has such great, like amazing, free, useful tools and tips. 
But when we're first starting out, it's harder to ground ourselves because then we want to try everything. And then the tension of your third line is like, okay, let's try it out. But it's also important that you are an emotion authority, but you're also a generator. So I, I think that was one of the things that I noticed and something that I share with generators often, like you do have an emotional authority, but your sacral is what makes you a generator. So whatever also lights you up is important, you know, go through the wave, but also check in with your sacral at the same time, even though in your case, they're not connected through a direct gate or channel, but the way that you know, they can both kind of align is when you move through different auras, when you maybe have different groups of friends or different groups of meeting points or communities where you like to drop in and out. And you're like, oh, this is cool. Maybe I can talk about astrology. Maybe I can talk about business here. Do you have groups like this? I was just looking into this yesterday and I've been thinking about this for my whole life. I am so good with one-on-one with people. I feel like I just connect so deeply with with people like I feel this with you like it was just being so easy to just kind of like connect and and be myself with you which is really beautiful but that's the thing I've I've got these individual girlfriends and they're all so different and they all bring me something different we never we've hung out a few times together as a group but a lot of my journey with these girls has been one-on-one yeah and it's like they I think the way that I read it last night was they kind of amplify the different splits, right? So some, I have some relationships that feel more grounding because I have that um, lower gate and then some that maybe feel more from the heart and then some that are maybe a little bit more innovative, idealistic and light and airy, I guess. So that's super interesting. And that's exactly how you kind of sort through your insights along with your emotional authority, because all these energies, they're all working together, right? And then let's think about the emotional authority, like in your background, it's just running data. It's just like, okay, whatever you're going through, it's like scanning. And when you're moving through different auras, it's connecting to different parts of yourself. And you're like, oh, yes. And you're getting an insight here and insight there. And then eventually, we don't know how long, you're like, yes, this feels right or more like the way I look at our strategy and authority, it doesn't really tell us that, you know, this is the right path for you. A lot of pressure if we ever make decisions like this. And there is definitely an appeal because I think when we find ways to connect to ourselves, we want to make sure that we're making the right decision. But mm-hmm. it's really also like, okay, the right decision for you right now. What amount of energy do you have to commit to this, to try this out and then see the lessons? There is no guarantee that, you know, this will be super successful, which is scary, right? We want to make sure (laughs) that we are able to feed ourselves, which is still also very important, but also trusting that like, if I'm honoring myself, following this path right now, as long as you're grounded along the way, you will not be making the wrong choice, if that makes any sense. Yep, 100%, 100%. And, you know, that brings me to one of the questions I was like, you know, time is a construct that we create for ourselves. It's a limit that I create for myself. And so I think one of the questions was like, you know, there are situations in life where you got to make a decision like yes. now, right? Yes. And it's like, when you have to go through this, the, the way yeah. to get there, but that is not necessarily, you know, part of that process to have a, yeah. a decision like that. How, how do people with that type of, of strategy you know, yeah. work with that, with that yeah. construct of that we've created as humans with time. I you love know? that. I love that. Like make it applicable to real life. Because again, there yeah. are timelines. We do work under like a, an ecosystem that everybody is connected to. So I love that question. So there yeah. are ways. So now that you know that, you know, moving with different auras, giving yourself a little bit of space whenever possible. And then you talked about your open centers. So you, you're triple split with two completely open centers, the crown, <laughs> a pressure center, and also the completely open spleen. So the That's crown, cool. right? You're like, so fun. So good. <laughs> It'll give you like, I think when I look at the open centers, I see them. Yes, yeah, sometimes it can like, pull us in for a ride, <laughs> where we're like, Oh, my gosh, what just happened? But also, it's one of the most beautiful sources of wisdom and even in human design they see that as our biggest lessons and the gifts we get to give back to people 
Before we get there, though, <laughs> we're going to have to learn our relationship with these centers. And they're not something to be feared, because sometimes when I see people that might have, you know, a lot of openness, they fear it. And they're like, oh, my gosh, I need to be away from people. I need to like, I don't know, I can't handle that. I don't think that is useful for us. You know, it's supposed to empower us and we can admit that we are sensitive. It is a lot. So how do we support ourselves knowing that's our need? So an example, I have seven open centers and I'm like, oh, now it makes sense. Well, I feel so overwhelmed with the world and nothing's wrong with me. But that just means that like after a night out, I'm like, okay, maybe extra practices to ground. Maybe I need some like movement. Maybe I shake it off. Maybe I feel extra grumpy. So I tell, you know, whoever's in my in my circle right I'm like give me like a few hours by myself so knowing those things so in your case knowing that you amplify the pressure the pressure that are people's ideas inspiration and even mental anxieties like it's very likely that you amplify that and you feel like I need to move from that because one thing about these pressures and these energies they feel physical it's not just mental like we feel it in our body we it sends our body like do something about it because you're feeling it. So knowing that your emotional authority in sacred, it's like, hey, can I check in? Do I, is this, a, is this like a, a cue to explore a little bit because I find it fascinating or it's actually some mental anxiety that my body actually doesn't have energy to solve right now. And actively releasing it, right? Like noticing yeah. my, my sister-in-law, in law and I go through the practice of like asking ourselves consistently is this ours because you know like you said if I have the crown I I feel like I get very inspired by what other people are inspired about yeah. and I feel like with the open spleen I feel the fears of other people and I've been a competitive athlete for many years and now I'm going into the space of becoming an entrepreneur and it's so important that I you know, check back in with myself as often as I can, because, you know, that's just it, you know, trying to remain sovereignty, keep your energy, um, protect your energy, I guess, is, is the mm -hmm. word that I like to use, right, in those situations when you're with others, and just knowing that about yourself, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Or yeah, just being able to recognize sometimes tuning into your body helps. Sometimes those energies might be harder to shake in, especially if it's in the transit. It's like, oh, well, I, I guess I just I can't shake it. Maybe writing it down, maybe just like, OK, there is some pressure here. There is something that wants to be moved. Doesn't mean I need to, you know, commit to a big project right away. Doesn't mean I have to make a five year plan. But it's like, OK, you want me to do something. Maybe I can try give myself half an hour and then check in with my body because then Sometimes our our mental energies are so strong that we can go, go, go. But the moment we check in with our bodies, even sit down or lie on the floor, like completely change a body position. And then you, you're like, okay, am I energized or like, am I exhausted? If I'm exhausted, then I can tell this is mental anxiety. Totally. Yeah. I think that's what the generator piece too, right? Is like we we have the energy to do it and we could be deceived by you know, mm -hmm. energy that's not necessarily, or like what we feel is, is what we're a, it's a hell yeah, right? Like that's the yeah. other thing I consistently ask myself. It's, if it's a hell yeah, uh, it's a hell yeah. If not, it's a, like any other feeling other than a hell yeah is a hell no, yeah. right? Yes, yes. So yeah, because like such a good point, when you do commit to something that was from the outside, from like the mind, from other energies you've amplified, then you're not going to have the energy to sustain it. And then you might feel like, what's wrong with me? Am I flaky? All those stories we tell ourselves that, you know, might feel true, but then sometimes it's just the influence from other energy. And then like the open spleen, this is, you know, you have the capacity to tap into the, the seven, the eight gates that are completely in the spleen, but to, you know, sensitize to all the fears that you amplify. Nowadays, I feel like with social media and also with the way that we are a lot more connected in the world, the fears are also being amplified. The fears are also being like 10 times like dialed in when you do feel it, which can feel a lot, but it also tell, helps you tap into, okay, what is the well-being of the collective? What is the well-being of the community? Because mm -hmm. your definition is also defined through the community um, channel. It is very like communal. It is very like, 
okay, mm. what do people need? What's happening? So it gives you that ability, but also like you said, how do I release it later and allow it to feed into my intuition? Because you do have intuition. It's not something you project out. It's not something that people are always, you know, pulling from you, but you are in tune. Everybody's in tune. Mm -hmm. So that energy gets fed by the, you know, fears, but also intuition from others. How do you nourish that? How does that feel? If anything, recognizing fear and how your body reacts to it, working with your fears, practices Mm -hmm. to be like, oh my gosh, where do I feel the fear? Why is this fear? that could be such a great way to work with this energy. So it doesn't feel like it's moving your body along. So you have to like, oh my gosh, protect myself from everything. Yeah, be in that fight or flight mode. I think that for those, I feel like for those that have that, you know, in a sense, when you have that awareness of that energy and it's not yours Mm -hmm. and that we can ground it or transmute it in itself is, is so powerful. And I think probably a purpose of having something like that. Cause obviously when I first look at that, I'm like, Oh, great. Like I just absorb other people's fears and I just feel this all the time. And you know, this affects, affects me so much. How can I work with this? But you know, after thinking about that and, and when you recognize that and you're able, cause you can feel it. I, you know, I don't know might take some time I've had a meditation practice for so long right Mm -hmm. and you know I um I feel very sensitive to that so you can feel it like if you tell the energy to move through you it will move through you and it will Mm -hmm. ground itself right um and that's been the biggest asset for me to work with work with that right and I found that I was able to be more in my energy my frequency and keep my frequency because Sometimes I think it was easy for myself to kind of get sucked into narratives or emotions or other Mm -hmm. energies that aren't mine. And then you don't feel so great. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's super, super important that like energy clearing that uh, having a practice like that for, um, for anyone is, is so important so that we can, you know, keep our cups full and therefore be there for ourselves and, and the people around us, right? It's, it's a huge practice in awareness. Yeah. How, what are the practices that you personally use or it helps you ground and release? For me, so being that generator piece and having a lot of energy, I, I have to check in with myself constantly with caffeine, right? Like there was mm. Restricting, it's not restricting. I still enjoy caffeine. I love coffee, but it's like if today, if I'm feeling like I'm already buzzing, like I'm going to maybe just be like, okay, it's a herbal tea morning kind of thing, but I'm not, you know, still get that wholesome craving. Um, the breath work has been super powerful for me. I find for myself, I feel very temporal sometimes, like I get very much in the head, um, mm-hmm. very logical and analytical. So the breath works where you do breath holds, it forces you to get into the body, right? You can't think when you're, (laughs) you don't have any, you're not breathing, right? Like you're sitting and really just feel my body in those moments. That's really helped. Um, And then, yes. And then physical activity for, for the generators as well. I find if I, I'm buzzing a little bit and I'm a little bit temporal. The physical activity helps me to get into the body as well. I think for me, it's, it's going to always come back to get back into the body because mm. I feel like I'm, I already have that tendency to, to go to the mind first and yeah. we need to be in the body, you know, with that sacral wave, right at the end of it, it's going to be like a body. Yes. It's going to feel, it's going to feel when it's a grounded yes for me, it's not like a sugar high. Yes. Mm. And the sugar high yes is kind of like a lusty, like, Ooh, like I want this. Cause like, I just want it, you know, it's, it's like, it's a grounded calm. Yes. Like just a, a knowing peaceful. Yes. Is how I would describe it. I digress, but I've been thinking about that piece a lot as well. Just when, when to know when it's right for you. And there is a difference slightly with, um, with how your body reacts to things. And if it's truly genuinely right for you, it's going to feel calm. It's going to feel 
just like the right thing to do in the body because it, there's no energy associated to it I'm trying Ooh, to like describe. yeah yeah I love it I love it because yeah. there are so many cues that our bodies give us and it's really up to us to sensitize like how what is this cue is it actually real excitement or is it condition excitement is it like a great idea or condition and sometimes the condition can add on to what we already are feeling but mm -hmm. even that nuance of like oh yeah like maybe I need a little bit more space or like a not yet even knowing that it's not a no it's not a yes but not yet I think I need a little bit more time can be so helpful and yeah. I also wanted to mention you have a defined ajna to your throat, the 1762. So in a way, you're always going to be, you are processing things through your mind. Like this mental energy is always going to be there. You are going to spend time there. You're also a split definition. So this might be an energy that you notice the most. And it's the one that in this society right now, it's being praised for at least, you know, in the past 50 years and hundreds of years, like, okay, how do you define what you're doing how do you explain yourself how do you organize yourself why are you making this decision you know those kind of things but right now I think hopefully we're moving towards also leaning into the feminine side of like oh this feels better for me a more intuitive like a balance of logical and intuitive yes I'm feeling that shift in the collective I really am and it is so important like the I think when it's in the body as the, the, the super important part is they have to work together because yes. when you're just solely logical and you don't recognize how you feel about something, you might have to learn something the hard way. Mm. It's not going to be all the time, you know, it's not going to be all the time, but I think for me, connecting those two things together, I have made some of some more of those aligned decisions for myself and I can feel that and in those moments when you really aren't sure but there's just like this inkling there's an inkling yeah like, I think this is right but I'm not sure that you the body's gonna push you it's gonna give you that that little bit of confidence it's so subtle but you know, I think that's where having those practices to connect to the body, those, those decisions are good, just going to come just slightly easier with, with that mind body connection for sure. Yes. And I mean, you have the 46 and you know, your incarnation cross, it's a right angle cross um, vessel of love. So a lot of just you being you <laughs> embracing the things that fascinate you you're teaching people like how do I love myself how do I connect to my body how do I love my body like this physical form that is taking me through <laughs> this you know ex 3d experience on this earth and you know even you talking and sharing your experience I'm like I can feel that energy buzzing that excitement of like you know connect to your body it's okay it's safe <laughs> it's yeah, it gonna knows guide what you. to do yes it's gonna guide you a hundred percent but you know it's it hasn't been the most simple um initially I want to say initially intuitive it's something mm -hmm. it's a learned thing for me personally um because yeah I, I love to just rationalize everything and that that getting back to that intuitive piece getting out of the mm -hmm. fight or flight getting back into that intuitive piece you can just trust that you know your body knows exactly what it needs to do right yeah um, so that's really cool oh Yes. And something I do want to also bring out, sometimes there might be some decisions that our minds are like panicking about, but if your body feels at peace, it's like, okay, how do we align both of them? Like if there's a little bit fear with this decision or a little bit of excitement and it's like, how can I also listen to that, but also grounding into, okay, my body feels good with it and let my mind kind of unravel because your mind is going to try to make sense of the fears. It's yeah. just human. We're human, right? We want to understand, like, are we feeling afraid? How can we do this? You know, your 762 is almost like, okay, how do I organize this? How do I share? How do I make sense of this? Like, how do I share with others? You know, there is a reason. And sometimes yeah. this can be very helpful. But if you're feeling, you know, a lot of the fear, like over your body, making sense of it not might not help at the moment. But eventually, when you look back, you're like, oh, here is the yeah. wisdom. Here's the lesson. Do you yeah. notice that? <laughs> 
hundred percent. I've, I'm thinking of a specific situation this past summer. I, um, I hired someone to help me out with the work that I'm doing right now. And I was going through a hand, a handful of people that I liked. And I was like, you know, right. With that emotional authority, like feeling like I'm drawn to something, but there's still that, well, what if, right? Like, what if this could be better? What if this could be better for, for my situation right now? And at the end of the day, it was just like, well, this feels right. Like it just, I'm going to take a chance on this. There's just that 1% that is slightly leaning more towards this, you know, one avenue than the other. I'm not, I, I can't see why or how mm-hmm. it's going to manifest, but there's just this, this feeling that I have. And, you know, like I said, for the, for the other people who are also just starting that journey and, and having that relationship with themselves, it's just, yeah, starting to recognize when things feel good, right? Mm. Just the simplest things. It's like, well, I want to get a matcha latte today. Cause I just really yeah. feel like that today. Go for that. That's, that's that feeling, right? Like when you're at yeah. the grocery store and you're looking at what you want to buy, right? It's, you're going to have this, this feeling, you know, leaning towards one thing more than the other. That's what it is. And it's mm-hmm. just the more that you trust that the louder it's going to get. Mm. Yes. Because it's like a muscle. The more you flex it, the more you lean into that, it becomes a little bit louder. And then the fears or whatever, the other voices are not as loud. And then yeah. something else about your emotional authority, because it is defined through like the community, the tribal circuit, a lot of how it nourishes itself or it enjoys, it's like physical touch or contact. It could be like a massage, a hug. Do you feel that you gravitate to that? Do you feel safe with yeah. touch? <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. Connecting back in with ourselves. I think this is a beautiful time to be here because we have the space to do that, right? To really just step out of the fight or flight for a moment, just realize, I mean, for for those that are lucky enough to have their basic needs met right now, Mm -hmm. there's that bandwidth to just start to connect back with ourselves, I think now, more than ever, more than we've ever been able to do, right? It's super special because when you do, it's and you're living from from yourself things flow so much easier you know and it doesn't happen like overnight it's a practice it's a practice and being devoted to to connecting with ourselves in that way um eventually brings like all the magic that there is that life can offer us yeah that was beautiful And I know you mentioned a little bit, you know, when you're grounded, it feels good. And then sometimes there are fears or even like the third, the three, five line, the martyr heretic. Honestly, the name feels so brutal, but I know so many of them in my life and they're so admirable because as much as, you know, they keep going, (laughs) they have the ability to keep showing up, to keep throwing spaghetti in the wall. But I think a big importance of letting that do its work or letting that energy move especially for the third line it's like how can I trust that even though I don't know where this is going I don't know what this is going to lead to but I'm going to keep trying I'm going to see how this works out like being able to make mistakes to fail but I don't even want to just phrase it like that because you're some people come to me like I'm just here to fail <laughs> I'm like no no that's not what it means it just means that sometimes through failure, you get to learn and then you mutate. That's the mutative part of this energy because as a third line, you're transitional. You're moving between, you know, the inner hexagram to the outer hexagram so that you can eventually externalize your truth, your universal truth with others. But to get there, it's almost like you need to be the person who's tried it all. Otherwise, how do you become an authority? It's almost like people see you. (laughs) hundred <laughs> percent I just have to say for anyone feeling that way babes if we had all the answers we would not be here yeah. and I have to be you know like 
I am so guilty of this. I am the hardest person on myself. I want to rephrase that. I have been the hardest person on myself. Mm -hmm. That's not what I want to go towards. I want to have more grace with myself because life is about making those mistakes and learning from them because how else are we going to do it better next time? There's no other way. There's no other way, you know, but I, I can attest to that energy because I've, I've totally been there. And, and that's, that's exactly where my mind goes. It's like, great. Am I just supposed to literally for my whole life just fail? Because that's, mm-hmm. that's the literature that's put out there, yes. but it's, it's not, it's not the case. And it also means we get to try so many more things. That's so fun. That's yeah. so much fun. Like yeah. life is about being here and living and trying things. And I think along the way, you're going to find something that feels really good. Mm. And maybe yes. that's when you're going to like stick to it, right? That's where it sticks. That's where the spaghetti sticks. Yes. Yes. And, and then like, you come uh, up with amazing recipes that people have not tried before. Yeah. And it's not just about failing because there's going to be a lot of wins a lot the way. And I think sometimes people don't talk about that. They just talk about like, you're here to fail. Yes. You can find the things that don't work. Like, in fact, you might be able to pick up a package and it breaks and you're like, well, look at that. You know, it's almost like mistakes or, you know, little accidents find you. <laughs> Because you also have the energy to like, okay, how do I improve when you everything else is aligned? How do I overcome this? And then share with others. Like you do have the energy to bounce back. Something yeah. that I share like with six line, our first 30 years, we live as a third line, but we don't have the energy or the resilience to bounce back as much. That's why we spend another 20, 30 years on the roof to be like, what the heck was that? How yeah. do I make sense of life? But with a third line, it can be very painful at the beginning, or especially with our upbringing, cultural expectations, society, it feels like, what's wrong with us? Like, do I not get anything right? It doesn't mean you didn't get anything right. It just means like you're here to keep exploring. Okay, what else? What else can be improved? But again, leaning into your strategy and authority, because not everything has to be solved by you. And then with the fifth line projections of like, oh, heretic, why heretic the way I see it my husband's a three five it's like you can pick up the things that are not working right away you can call them out but if people are not ready to hear it they call you a heretic but months later even a week later they might be like they might reach the same conclusion mm-hmm. <laughs> and completely ignore you and that's frustrating to see I can see your face reacting to it you might call out things that people are not ready to hear are not ready to see So how do you like ground into the energy of like, people are going to project to me, they're going to expect for me to solve things to save the day. And at the same time, I'm here to experiment, I make, I might make mistakes, and it might feel very kind of nerve wracking, there's a tension there, right? Because having the projections, you don't want them to see you fail otherwise you know they <laughs> they cast you away they say you know what is wrong with you? their projections fail and it feels very brutal for a fifth line at the same mm-hmm. time your third line is like we need to try it if we don't try we don't know if it works or not so how do we reconciliate both of them how does it feel for you like with the projections mm, I would say so for the third line energy the energy to me felt scattered right mm-hmm. and it's almost like I had to grapple with being everywhere that I wasn't right it's like I wanted to be everywhere but where I I have my own two feet and the moment I surrendered to the process of of well it's my process it's my process to try different things to to do things different way to do things my way Um, and I'm not saying that my way is the right way or, or that person's way is the right way, but it's the way that you want to, to take something and work with it. Right. Um, the more that I surrendered to that, the less, you know, frustration and irritation, because what really, what really happened for me is, is I'm, I'm fighting my process and it makes me feel bitter and I can, I can't hide my emotion. I wear that on my sleeve, right? Like I'm a cancer and, um, it's just vis- visible, visible upset, right? The moment that I, I surrendered to that, things start to flow. And you know what? Being a generator too, things will, will come to you when the time is right. So 
it's kind of like that moment to moment living on what feels right, getting the things done that you need to get done in the moment and, and then doing things that, you know, right now feels really exciting to do. Like last week, I, I'd love to start a podcast. That was always something I was super excited about. I just, I just did a random thing that on a Wednesday night, hadn't done it for months. That's just yeah. what I felt like doing. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, I'm working on something else I'd like to launch in the summer. I've been working on that. Too. I've been working on so many different things. And you know yeah. what? I'm going to accept that every day of the weeks might be a little bit different on yes. what my hobby is, yes. right? Yes. Or like I want to do. But like, you know what? I'm going to surrender to Sorry to interrupt, but I was like, you do have as your sun gate, I believe your personality sun (laughs) gate 15, (laughs) which is the gate of extreme. So your, your rhythms will look very different (laughs) for people. You might oscillate between like seasons of like, I want this, I'm going to be very committed to this. And then seasons change or something, or a cycle is wrapped. You're going to notice your body, your taste, everything changes. So your cycles are not like nine to five, Monday to Friday. Nobody cycle is actually, but you know, your cycles are not like, I'm going to get this done in five days. It's almost like the extreme of like, what do I feel like today? Like, what am I, you have a love for humanity, a love for like all the extreme, like you're able to see all those things. So whatever you're oscillating towards that day, that's your truth in the moment. That's what you have energy for. And surrender to it. I'm going to surrender to it. It feels, it feels nuts. I feel like a, like a martyr heretic. I feel like, (laughs) you know what? I'm just going to let that be my process and it's okay. It's, I'm, you know, it can be fun. Every, every coin has two sides. You can always look at it. Well, this is sucky or I can make the best of this. And I'm working on that. That's something that I'm working on towards as well. And it's a practice, you know, it's, It's always just trying to be and see things in, in that other light, because we can always see both. Well, both always exist, right? Um, I guess that other piece with, you know, having people come to me and I think there's a gate associated to this. I, it's, I don't know which one it is Mm -hmm. at the moment, but there is a timing to, to sharing, right? And there's, people are going to come to me. And I've had this for for a lot of my life where people just trust me to, it's mostly bouncing ideas off of coming up, coming to me with, you know, feelings and, and ideas or moments that they're going through that they just want to share with and project with and bounce ideas off of. And I feel I'm super lucky to be that person that people can trust me to, to be open and, and, also that they respect my opinion. And I think it's also because when you have that third energy and you have a lot of experience and you've tried a lot of things, you know, there's a lot of wisdom to be shared through that. Right. And the gift of the third line (laughs) gift. And you know what, we got to share that, that other people need to, you know, receive that wisdom that we learn. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it really supports, like you said, you're able to support your own process. When you shared about, you know, things were able to flow. Do you have any like examples by that? Just so for anybody listening, you know, cause we hear about like, oh, things are flowing. And I use that often, but I'm like, do people actually know how things feel when it's not flowing? How do you feel? Like what happens when you're not flowing? Yeah. How does that bubble feel like? <laughs> When things aren't falling into place, if, yeah, if I'm in that moment, you know what? I think that's also, that's also just being human, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's going to be days where I wake up and I, I just don't feel my best or things don't go my way. And I think it's for me, this is actually what I'm, I'm learning right now is, is I, I like to control things. Yeah. I, I right, like I, I like to have a plan, and I think it's learning. That's that's another thing of being human, right? Is is learning to, if I'm in this moment, how can I make the best of it? 
Um, how can I surrender? I think that's a lesson in surrendering. If things aren't in flow, typically for me, at the very least, I'm fighting something. I'm I'm resisting, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I think it's it's just a big lesson for letting go for me, and I'm still in that right now to this day. Like I am trying to transmute that energy and make the best of situations because I think you know, if we, if we let go, we're exactly where we need to be, you know, in that moment. And it's just trying to, yeah, surrender, let go, accept. Yeah, yeah. To adapt. I think that's such a beautiful lesson because, uh, you know, I also have like the 21, which is like the gate of the hunter huntress and control. It's like, oh, okay. Trying to like organize. And this gate is so useful. It's so great for, you know, community purposes, supporting the people around us, organizing things. But when it comes to our lives, it's not really what this energy is best used for, because when we try to apply it, we end up getting in our own way, not letting things flow because there's a lot of magic that happens in between that we cannot plan for. But when we're honoring ourselves, when we're able to like listen to our bodies and be just like, what do you need today? And to, it might be different than what we had planned initially. And that's yeah. totally fine. And there are some days that we're going to feel crappy. It's just human. Are we fighting against that feeling? Or we're like, you know what? You're feeling crappy. You're not productive. Fine. What do you need? <laughs> and I tell like, do you want to have a cup of coffee? Do you want to eat some junk food? Like, it's not terrible <laughs> to do it once in a while. Yes, that piece that you just mentioned, like, taking a moment being like, okay, what do I need right now? Because sometimes if I'm feeling frantic, like yeah. absolutely just not good. <laughs> that's like the moment I think where our bodies are trying to tell us something. That's totally yeah. what it is. And, it, you know, connecting back with that, you know, each individual person connecting to their feminine side, that's what that is right? The, it's the masculine side. That's the doer. That's the, the achiever. That's the, you know, gets the job done. It's the feminine, the more yin side of us where we, you know, slow down, be a little more methodical, be a little bit more in our bodies, right? That's that piece mm -hmm. of that awareness in that moment. So powerful to ask ourselves, what do I need right now? And that's just it. Maybe it's a cup of tea. Maybe it's to sit down. Maybe you need to do yoga nidra for like 10 yeah. minutes. Like maybe it's a cuddle or a hug <laughs> a hug a hug you know a a humans need like at least eight hugs a day okay for health and b when did we stop napping like when did it become okay for adults I to nap know. even if it's just five minutes that was another thing you know when you asked me about some some tips and tricks for myself yeah. if I even just close my eyes for five minutes let me tell you it can change your whole day your whole day and maybe that's uh, what you need. Yes. Yes, <laughs> yes. I love that you brought that up because, you know, for projectors, they, they say it often, like projectors need nap, but I'm like, not the only one, like my husband's a generator and I watch him often. He naps so many times a day. Like he's just sitting on his computer and I see him doze off and then he's back. And it's almost like, yeah, like even your sacral needs to be nourished. Like even when you're thinking a lot, using your energy a lot, it can be exciting, but your body is a body. It needs rest. It needs nourishment. It needs ways to regulate as well. So thank you. Like nap, maybe we can add it. We need nap in this episode. Do you need a like, nap or are you feeling stressed? Title of the episode. Yes. <laughs> when did you die? People yeah. Die. <laughs> it's so true. So true. Yeah. So how are you feeling now? I know you're like moving forward to things. Are you feeling more grounded in yourself or are there still things that you feel like, oh, something could be helpful as I, what do you want to dive more into that you feel like it's a, a little bit tense right now? Mm. I think for me, that piece with you know, and I think maybe let's see, it's the, it's the crown because no, it's the Ajna is the ideas in the mind. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, that's where I feel like is my next piece that I'm working on right now. And I think it's going to be super, super important with the work that I want to be doing is, mm -hmm. is having the mindset to receive and having mm -hmm. the minds to collaborate with life. And I think that comes with trusting myself and trusting life but I'm not going to be able to see it 
if, you know, I'm not giving grace and kindness to myself, you know, as I mentioned, um, for those that resonate with being hyper achievers or, or judgmental or just any aspects of, of, you know, perfection or just doing the best that you can do. Um, not being so hard on myself. That's Mm -hmm. really where I'm right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm still in it. I had a couple days, um, that were just challenging, you know, they're, they're patterns in myself that I'm trying to recognize and work towards, um, you know, transmuting that energy that, that is not going to serve us to, to do and live the best lives that we can live here. So that's, that's where I'm at. And it's, I'm still, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, so that's, I've got work to do. I love to have work (laughs) generators, right? There's always work to do, right? If we do look into our lives, I'm sure everybody will probably find something to fix to improve on human nature. We want to grow as well. But also, I don't know why, as you were talking about this, like the fifth line was coming to mind, like projections, like, do you feel the projections because it's also on your unconscious side so you might notice them on the energetic level but it could also it, it's almost like it pulls onto your energy like hey you can do this do you want to step into this do you want to take this challenge do you want to like prove us because you also have the the whole the centering circuit the individual energy of like being able to center ourselves from like the the 25 51 and then the 10 34 so all of that when you are honoring your individual truth, when you're committing to yourself, sometimes the decisions that you make might shock others. In, in fact, it shocks them into, <laughs> into who they are. It's like, whoa, you know, like, what did you do? What did you overcome? This was your life story? Like, you know, it just has this shock value. Paired with a fifth line, it could be like, oh my gosh, with that, there's also projections and the expectations. So that can kind of double down on like, oh, feeling the energetic tug of like, do this, prove yourself, show us. Yes. Yeah. I totally feel that. And it's all self-imposed, you know, there's no, it's amazing. It's, it's life is so, you know, it's, it's all about us and it's not about us at all. You know, I come here Mm -hmm. and I'm like, I want to go like major is what the energy feels like the pressure feels like you know from the root I have that yeah. that what is that um I Your, have I, you have the pressure at the 54 which is the pressure to be um the keynote is the merry maiden the yeah. it's a very ambitious energy <laughs> the gate of drive you're here you yeah. will feel the pressure to like oh how do I grow how do I climb the social ladder but you don't necessarily have the awareness of like what do I commit to? Like, what do I channel this energy into? And then how do I communicate that with others? You just have feel of like, let's go, let's prove yourself. Do it. Like, to do something. I don't know what I'm doing, but I got to do it. And yeah. it, it doesn't have to be something. It's whatever, whatever I can give that's going to shift someone else's life. I think at the end of the day, it's how can I, be my best example and then hopefully Mm. that'll ripple towards towards other people and I don't need to I think the more that I'm able to to ground that Mm -hmm. and and step into that trusting of life that will come to me and and it'll make itself very clear but in the meantime I can just do what I can do in each moment by moment life is going to be every individual moment That's going to make you any, right? But like, what can I do right now that's going to help serve me to get there? If that's really what I want, that's going to come to me. That's going to make itself clear. But it's not going to, unless I'm with the right attitude, the right headspace, I'm in my body, right? Because it's every moment that's going to guide you towards that. And I think the more that I surrender and I'm as aware as possible in each moment, am I going to be able to empower myself mm, towards yeah. you know, the overwhelm and the pressure? 
that will subside. It's in that moment, right? Am I going to choose to, to be, how do I want to choose to feel in that moment? Yeah. And how do you, the moment powerful? Yeah. And it's also like, I feel like as you're talking to you feel the energy, it's almost about nourishment. Like I'm going to feel the pressure to want to prove myself. I'm going to feel people's expectations and those projections. But when you're nourished, when you're grounded, the way you react, you take in that energy, you dance with that energy will be so much more different than someone who's like, oh my gosh, like my life sucks. I need to prove myself. You know, it's a completely different energy committing to that. So, you know, thank you for reflecting because I feel like the lesson for me or what I'm taking from this conversation, a reminder is just like when we are nourished ourselves, <laughs> that's the first step. Our capacity to react to the external circumstances, to the energies that we feel because we can control what we amplify. We can control like the fears that we take in and, you know, the adrenaline, but we can improve our relationship with them. So it doesn't make us reactive because what if every idea you get, every pressure to prove yourself, to climb the social ladder, you jump on, you'll end up exhausting yourself. You'll end up committing to everything and feeling even more frazzled while the third line energy can feel like, oh my gosh, I'm all over, all over the place. When it comes from you, when you're moving in alignment, it's like, yeah, I got all these pieces moving. I got all these different dishes that I'm preparing, adding ingredients to each. They're not ready. Some of them are baking. Some of them are in the prep stage and it's fine. It's almost like I have, my energies are going through these channels, but I'm not committing to things that are draining my energy and not sustaining me back. Yes. I love that piece that you mentioned, the different recipes at different stages. There's processes to things. And I really had to you know, for those that struggle, like, am I doing enough? Right? Yeah. Like, yes, because each thing that you're working on is out of process. And and the biggest gift that I've learned is, you know, a do a little bit every day. And, you know, sometimes that's all you can do, because that's all that, that whatever you're working on the task or, or the project, that's, that's where it's at. That's all you can do. So then you got to step back. And I think it's, you know, it comes back to trust and accepting that everything is where it needs to be. And you're in the moment, the, the exact right moment that you need to be in. And again, it's a, it's a practice because I've, I've been there too. And I still feel those days all the time. And I'm just going to keep coming back to it's, it's in that moment that we're in right now, like right Mm -hmm. now, you know, it's, everything is fine. Our basic needs are met our, you know, um, everything is, everything is fine. Right. And, and then moving from there, what is a priority now moving from there, right? Like starting within and moving out. And yeah, I think if, if we just work on that process and and connecting back with ourselves, the magic of life really happens. It really, Mm -hmm. it really, and I can only say that now been putting in some of the work and, um, and that's what it is. It's, it's, it's work living here being human is work and it's a gift yeah <laughs> it's a yeah gift. Oh. and I think one of the things you also mentioned was like the sacral waiting to respond you know does that mean I don't commit to life and it's almost yes. like you answered it yourself like you're just taking care of yourself and your sacral will be pulling things your way it's almost like and I don't know if you've heard that from my other podcast episode, but I described the sacral almost like you're in the middle of like the sushi conveyor belt, whatever your favorite food is or your dietary preferences, you're in the middle of it and things are moving around you. And really your task is to take care of yourself and say, yes, no, yes, no. <laughs> Sounds simple. I know. But an example I use is like, what if you're like very excited for this special dish and you're waiting for it to come? And that could be like, a representation of like a job opportunity, a relationship, whatever you're like, I want, I want this in my life. I want it, but it's not coming. And all you see is this toast that has no butter, no jam, nothing, just a piece of toast. And you're like, you know what? I'm hungry. I'm going to take it. So that's an example. Sometimes 
I use as like you committed to something you're eating it because you're not excited but you you're desperate and sometimes we do need to make those choices in order to survive and pay the bills so you're okay eating the toast for a little bit you don't feel satiated you don't feel excited and then as you're eating the toast the favorite thing you wanted whatever dishes that you're waiting for it's like passing by you're like oh my god you're like why it's because you were you know making a decision you might have been too busy taking whatever you think is your only opportunity is the only thing coming your way that you don't have the capacity for when the thing does come to engage with it yeah yes that comes back to the now moment right and having the right attitude and for me that's where it's so important and in those in every moment like picking how you want to feel even though maybe you don't feel great and it's okay to not right doing our best right because those opportunities do come when we least expect it you know and then being in in that process when everything has a process it came exactly when it needed to come right and being okay with being being in the middle of where you were and where Mm -hmm. you're going right okay to that that process that middle where I hated it I went through I hated middle I was like I don't like this one bit oh yeah go through that and use it as as rest use it as Mm. recuperation as you know because that's why I love the seasons you know we're all heading into winter and you know I want to live more with that because we need to rest right like every everything has a season to it right the winter is the rest the the spring is sowing the seeds the summer is um, allowing everything to grow and the fall is the harvest. And if you're, you're in the winter stage between opportunities, you know, try for me, it's, it's trying to be where you're at. Right. Yeah. And being, yeah. But, yes. Know. And taking care of yourself because when we're in those in-between moments, that's when at least my mind panics the most. And it's just like, okay, what can I do? How can I grab more opportunities? How can I? And it's like, sometimes learning about human design, it's like, actually, <laughs> those moments that you feel like you need to control more, it's a, a an invitation to actually control less and be like, okay, how can I be with myself? Because things are coming. And I think that's the biggest difference between a manifester and the rest of the designs. When we learn about manifestors, they do have the ability to initiate, but it's not whenever they want, whatever idea they have, they still need to like lean into their strategy and authority. Like if they have the energy, they will be able to start whatever they are being guided to start. Otherwise, if they start from their minds, which a lot of people are like, I'm manifester, I'm Sean, I've started so many things and they failed. I'm like, well, like you are a manifester, but you're also human. You also have your mechanics. Your energy is also guiding you. If you're a manifester that never rests, how can you create or bring something into the world? And as a generator, right, your sacral is life force energy. If you are not also receiving, how are you filling in your own cup? Like you need to, I think learning to receive is something that as women, (laughs) it's something that we need to, we've been conditioned to give more growing up, like be the one who overextends to compromise. You know, we've been so conditioned to give to our families, to our loved ones, to be the understanding, great, great, you know, great aspects of what makes us us, but also receive. How can we sit back and allow life to support us? Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's so beautiful. And it's so true. Allowing life to support us because we deserve it. We're worthy of it. That's, that's yeah. So important. So important. Yeah. Oh, do that still too. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. Well, how are you feeling for the next few months? Do you feel more? Gra- I feel like you're so grounded in yourself already. <laughs> You know what? And this is amazing. So I reached out to you, I think it was three to six months ago, yeah. right? And I was like, what are you? and I wanted to be, it was self-empowered, confident, and to have trust in myself. And I think all of those things come from being grounded. And I do, I feel mm. like I still have a lot of work to do, but I feel like I'm in a great place to, I have more of a foundation now to build off of, you know, mm. and it just like genuinely slowing down um as much as you can right like 
in your capacity that you can do is, is just take a moment to get off the hamster wheel when you can, you know, and I think even just in the day to days, having more moments of awareness and, and just taking a breath and being in the body are all ways to just make those moments last longer and, and life doesn't feel like it goes by so fast, you know, and now I'm, I'm getting to the place where I'm ready to, to, you know, birth whatever I would like to, to, yeah. to bring to the world people with. Right. And that's, there's no other place you can be in to do that. Um, in a way that's truly going to support other people. And that's going to be most authentic to you. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I feel good. I, I this conversation is so magical and I hope, you know, my intention always is, is there's like one tidbit that anyone can take away, right? Like take it, leave the rest. Yeah. I just hope that there's something in my experience that can resonate with others and support others in their journeys. So yeah, yeah, I mean, I felt so inspired throughout, so I'm pretty sure more people will well, echo and resonate with that. Thank you so much for sharing what you've it? been going through, what you're feeling, and also like your passion for life, the vessel of love shining through. <laughs> I feel that when I, when I, when, you know, in that, I feel that heavily. I do. And it's, yeah. it's a gift. Hmm. It's a gift. Yeah. So basically, it's almost like you're, I, I'm like, what is the word? It's like a walking portal, a channel. Like you're, you're showing us what does it mean to love ourselves and what are the possibilities. And when you're living that, when you're following that energy, people, more people will want to come to you and ask, like, hey, how do I do that? A lot of the energies that you, well, not a lot, like two of the um energies you mentioned, the 1762 and even the 2551 those are like projected energies. So you know your ideas, your stories when people invite you or when they, you know, go and listen and when they like open to that energy, the impact, magical. <laughs> when you're received oh. and recognized, you know, that's basically the magic of that. And then learning to sit with it. Who are the people that I can share this with? Maybe this is not the right time and that's totally fine. Totally, right? That's the piece. And I was thinking it was that, it was the 2551. Yeah. The energy is better if one invited in wait for an invitation in order to guide and support yeah because yeah. you might be able to initiate yourself and you know those decisions you don't need the invitation or recognition but when there's somebody else that's coming into your life and you're like oh my gosh I can initiate you into something or like feeling like I can see this direction I can empower you if it's not invited in like it could be the best thing or exactly what they need but unless they are open to that <laughs> and then I use that as like the operation toy I think it was like if you you know touch the edges it shocks you and the person I'm like that's kind of how it feels sometimes when we're guiding <laughs> totally I mean I've, I've I've noticed it a lot it's like you can lead a horse to water but you can't mm. make it drink and Ooh, there's yes. so much power to to timing and and knowing when is the right time and I think for me you know yeah just being aware of that and and you can tell if people are ready for it and they come to you and they're ready to receive it. It's so much more powerful too, right? And yeah. so much more helpful. And I'm really noticing that. I'm just going to keep doing me. And if at the very least there's some sort of, you know, example I can give just by, by doing my best for myself, then that's the least I can do. And if, if I, you know, directly, invited to to share my experience and my story then I'm I'm an open book like I just love I just know for me you know it's, it's again like the the work that you're doing Jess with inviting different people to to talk about their stories it's been so powerful for me so thank you for doing what you do uh, and I think it's just it's making ripples for for others you know in their own journeys and hopefully we can all get to a place of being more at peace and and being in that energy where we feel most authentically ourselves because it is powerful it is so so powerful it's beautiful yeah, yeah. I, I think that's like when people ask me what is the purpose of life how do I like find 
just be yourself. It sounds such a cliche. It sounds like such a cliche, but that's the magic formula that everybody's asking around. (laughs) It is. It a hundred percent is when you least, least expect it to, it's, it's like you said, it's, it's something you feel it's magnetic. Like Mm. the people want to soak it up. They want to be around that. And I think yeah, the more that we can do that for ourselves and feel like we can do that for ourselves, the more that life, the challenges and the ups and downs, the, the hills and valleys that life does give us, I think we can just be that much better equipped to to go through them, you know, yeah. from that place. So it's powerful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, indeed. I feel so empowered. Thank you. I'm like, why am I feeling so empowered just by your energy and your wisdom? And yeah, I'm excited to see what you build or like release and share with the world. And yeah, I mean, you have your whole life ahead of you. Like we all do, right? No pressure. No pressure. Yeah, we're supposed of fun along the way right right so, isn't this the point we're not just here to work and point. heal and break traumas no. like no <laughs> but what I do like let me tell you the deepest mm. ones where I felt the worst where I've cried the most where I've just felt the really raw unhinged emotions and when it comes up like that it's because it's ready to go you know mm. and so in the day I feel the lightest I've ever felt. So if I were to leave any listener with anything, it's just like feel the feels, turn and face the fears and yeah, let it go because that's what it's only coming up to go. Right. Mm. So it's powerful healing stuff. And just to cry. Gosh, the best. Nothing like a good cry. (laughs) Oh, yes. Like, I love it. Such a good release, actually. <laughs> this should be another yeah. tip. Nap, hugs, <laughs> cry. Let it out. No, let it out. This, that's oh. the top tip answer right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you yeah. so much, Annalise. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, Jess, and for having me on. And I just hopefully we'll stay in touch because you're lovely and oh. uh, yeah, love everything you're doing. So I'll be following you. Same here. (laughs) Thank you so much for listening to the Whole and Unleashed podcast. If you're feeling pulled to get into action and want to connect within, check out the Align and Embody journal on wholeandunleashed.com. You'll also find resources on mindset, human design, and archive for past episodes of this podcast. And if you enjoyed this episode, please share, leave a comment, or review on iTunes and Spotify. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a wonderful day wherever you are.